Greetings, everybody. This is a continuation of the Godhead series. Turn to Proverbs chapter 30. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. You know, John 8, 12. Uh, Proverbs chapter 30. The words of Agur, the son of Jacke. Boy, I'm slaughtering these words, I'm sure, but even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Ucal. And no, that's not University of California. I'm pretty sure. Surely I am more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. Well, that's I don't have the knowledge of the holy either, so. Verse 4. Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Now, sounds to me like it's talking about the Lord here. Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Ooh, God has a son. How do you know? What do you know? What do you know? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Hmm. And no, Christ doesn't have a mother goddess named Shekinah. Shekinah exists only in the minds of rabbis. So, and that's S H E. K-I-N-A-H. The she kinda. No. 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 The goddess, they call her. So, when you hear churches talking about the glory of God, the she kinda, run, people. Run. You're dealing with the uh, Somebody without any, well, they learn from the you-know-whos. Yeah. Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Verse 5. Oh, tell this to the people that say, Oh, every Bible is the same. Uh, no, they're not. They're not. Verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. See, I could show you one Bible that says, uh, Thou hast increased the joy. And another Bible version says, Thou hast not increased the joy. So which is it? Lord, did the Lord increase the joy or not increase the joy? Well, they were under judgment. You know, and they tell you, oh, well, it doesn't matter what Bible you use. They're all the same. Is increasing the joy and not increasing the joy the same? No, they're not. So, God tried them and has found them to be liars. Verse 5, every word of God is pure. There wouldn't be 666 different versions of the Bible if one of them wasn't right. I mean, if Satan was able to corrupt them, there wouldn't be any need for all these different versions. One of them has to be right, which is why they flood you with all these different versions. Now, there's a reason for that. But if they were all corrupted, they wouldn't need to have all these different versions. It would be unnecessary. And you'll probably hear people saying, oh, the Mandela effect. 
Satan got a time machine. Did you know Satan built a time machine? Yeah. And then he went back in time and he changed the Bible. And God the Father was crying because, you know, he, he's like, oh, Satan, please stop. You're changing my Bible words. Please stop. And Satan's like, ha, 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 ha. You can't make me, can you? Ha, ha, ha. Well, that's basically, if you believe in the Mandela effect, that's basically, really, think about it. That's Isn't that what you believe? That God was unable to stop Satan from changing the Bible? I just, I, I can't, I can't go there. But yeah, there's, you know, there's people believe that. And if you want to believe that, that's fine. But I don't think Satan can change God's words. I think he can corrupt it with new Bible versions. But because uh, people will say, well, you know, the lion lays down with the lamb. And uh, now it's the wolf. Well, the thing is, Elvis Presley did a song, uh, one of his gospel things or whatever, and he was singing about the lion and the lamb, which was a, an older version of the song. And then pastors started using the lion and, and the lamb. And that's what people remember. They remember the pastors saying this stuff, not the Bible. So that's just one example. So, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Oh, yeah. In the New Testament, it says that if you uh, remove God's words, he would remove your name from the book of life. And if you added to God's words, he would add the plagues unto you that are written in the book of Revelation. Uh, either way is not a good thing. And that alone proves that once saved, always saved, eternal security is not true. If God can remove your name from the book of life, eternal security is a lie. I, you know, just like if you knowingly take the mark of the beast to be able to buy and sell, to eat, you're in big trouble. Big trouble. Big, big trouble. Now, I don't think that a, a, a child that has their parents do it to them, that's, that's a different thing. But I'm talking about an adult that knows what they're doing. So, just my opinion. Verse 6. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me not them, deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Vanity means worthless. So, remove far from me worthless things and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Why? Why would uh, the Lord says, don't make me, don't make, Lord, don't make me too poor or too rich. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? See, that's what happens when, uh, when you read the book of Judges. Israel got fat and happy, and they turned their backs on the Lord. They forgot him. Oh, I have all this because of the, the works of my hands. Not that the Lord had blessed you. No. They're brag. Oh, this is my hands. I did this. I planted the field. And it's just a coincidence that the rain came and had an abundant bumper crop. And I sold half of it and made a lot of money. And I'm full. I'm fat and happy. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or, 
lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. See, you don't want to be too rich and you don't want to be too poor lest you curse the Lord for your poverty. Verse 10. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. There is a generation that curseth their father, and doth not bless their mother. Yeah, I think we're living in those days now. There is a generation that is pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. You know, when you do a baptism, all you're doing is washing the skin. God doesn't care so much about water baptism as being baptized of the Spirit. That's more important. And I'm not talking about slithering on the floor, spouting gibberish. That's not what I'm talking about. Verse 13, there is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. See, it's pretty sorry when you steal from the poor. Really sorry. The horse leech hath two daughters, crying, Give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not. It is enough. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. You know, a fire will burn as long as you add fuel to it. It'll burn. And the earth is never full of water. Never. 17. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pluck it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. You know, a young woman, right? Ooh, I've, I've read this, but it's been a long time. Verse 20, listen to this carefully. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and said and saith, I have done no wickedness. I've done nothing wrong. An adulterous woman, she eateth, wipes her mouth, and saith, I have done nothing wrong. I have done no wickedness. I wonder if there's a connection there with Genesis 3 when it said that Eve, uh, well, Genesis 3, uh, where the woman said to the Lord, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Huh. I wonder if there's a connection there. Verse 21. For three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which it cannot bear. For a servant when he reigneth, and a fool when he is filled with meat. For an odious woman when she is married. Odious. Hmm. Odious means hateful, causing hate, uh, offensive. So 
keep that in mind. An odious woman when she's married. You know, a lot of women will marry a man just because they got money, not because they love him. Yeah, as long as I'm married to this clown, he'll feed me and give me a place to stay and buy me nice clothes. Uh, let's see. For three things, earth is disquieted, and for four, which it cannot bear. For a servant when he reigneth, reigneth, and a fool when he is filled with meat. For an odious woman when she is married, and an handmaid that is heir to her mistress. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants, the ants, the insects, right? The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The coonies are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks. Coonies are a, it's a bird. The locusts have no king, yet go they forth all of them by bands. The spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. There be three things which go well, yea, four are comely in going. A lion which is strongest among beasts and turneth not away for any. A greyhound, and he goat also, and a king against whom there is no rising up. You know, a king that doesn't have any enemies rising up against him. Verse 32, if thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, and if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. You know, uh, you ever see, you know, somebody puts their hand over their mouth? Yeah. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. So the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. That is the end of Proverbs 30. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.